Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the reason you're here this week on new song, Jake and Jill. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. So I do this crazy thing on Facebook. Fully clothed. Don't give me. Don't give me. Wrong. I was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I ask fans to submit random words. Okay, and then I take the top ten, no matter what they are, and I, I put all ten of those words in a song. Okay, and then I post it, and it's just something I do for fun, just work out my brain, entertain the fans, and most of the songs are pretty silly. The first one I ever did was My Doppelganger is a gang banger. He's five foot eleven and we could be twins. My Doppelganger is a gang banger and he's the whole reason for the trouble I'm in. (laughs) It was about this dude that gets in trouble, right? Because a gang banger looks like him. Doppelganger was one of the words. But anyway, Jayton and Jill, Jayton and Jill were two of the ten words. Okay. And so Jaden and Joe was one of the 10 word Music Monday songs that uh, for some reason, when I wrote, it actually turned out to be a great song that I, I was like, as I was writing it, I was like, okay, hold on a second. This is not really a joke. This is a, a good song. So when I, when I finished it, I, I came back around and polished it up a little bit and uh, it ended up being on my new record. And now, now it's our single. and. Jayton's mom comes to my shows in Fort Worth all the time. You know, she submitted his name. <laughs> Jayton, the real Jayton, is just a ten-year-old little boy. But in the in the song, it's it's a story song about two lost souls that find a connection. So that's, I think, the basis of country music, right I there. Know, <laughs> and you gotta love a good story, story song, song and lost you know souls. Saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's not enough of those around these days in my opinion and the new album so we're looking at around april time you'll be Mm -hmm. ready with a new record texas like that yeah what is texas like that you're texas like that i am texas like that where does the title come from uh i wrote a song by that title um and 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 it's just kind of speaks to um i think what makes texas unique uh is there's kind of a an independent spirit. I don't know what else to call it. It's kind of a hardworking, independent. We're sort of a gung ho attitude of like we're gonna do this on our own. And and um, and people down in Texas are proud to be from Texas. And there's a whole music scene down there that I'm really thankful for because um, it's the reason I'm able to do music for a living right now is because of the the Texas music fans. So. Um, we, we felt like it was a good album title just because um, it's just kind of indicative of where my career is at right now. We're playing, I live in Texas, we're playing mainly in Texas and Oklahoma, but we, we use those as a home base to, to spread out nationwide because at the end of the day, I'm just, a, I'm a country artist, you know? I write country songs and sing them, but... Um, but it is, you know, when you listen to my, when you listen to my record, you'll hear... I think you'll hear a little bit of a difference between the stuff that I write and uh, a lot of the top 40 country of today. And um, that's because I'm Texas like that. Exactly. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) What I loved, and Janet alluded it to now, that when I picked up the bio, the very first word I see is authenticity. And it's, it's a concept that's been more and more important in my life. And as I keep doing these interviews and get sort of more and more involved in the music industry, it becomes increasingly more important. Yeah. Is that something that you just always gravitated toward, or is it something you consciously had to cultivate in your life? Um, I think it's kind of intrinsic to my personality. I'm just, I'm a very honest person. I've always been honest with myself and just with everybody I'm, I'm kind of an open book type of guy and, and and I feel like I feel like we all go through the same thing so why not be honest about it and so that's the way I am in my songwriting too I'm not trying to not trying to sell you something that's not real because that would feel weird to me you know and I'm just I'm just saying 
I'm just doing, writing songs that I believe in and put them out there. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, and I do think that that, you know, I am a singer-songwriter, and I think by, by nature there's something authentic about that. I'm singing my own words. I came up with this. It's not somebody... It's not something that somebody else came up with somewhere that I thought, oh, I could make money by doing that. It's I'm telling you, you know, the songs that I sing are the words from my heart, from my mind. Um, so that's that's part of it. Um, and then I, the last thing I'll say about authenticity is just, you know, I feel like uh, that's sort of the one... That if, if you could sum up the difference between the Texas country music scene and, and other country music in, in one word, I think authenticity is what is what people down in Texas demand. Authenticity. Much more you know? than here. Yeah. They, it's, have you ever felt in any way kind of um, what I often see when people come here is even though they start from an authentic place being a songwriter and I'm going to sing my own words and they come here and everybody else is singing about trucks so I'll go write about trucks. Yeah. Is it something that you ever felt in any way that you needed to at least have a couple of things that were more conformist? Or have you always felt, no, I'm not giving in, I'm just doing my own? I'll tell you, the the concession, that, the only concession I've really made for me and for my career, I've never, I've never written a song, at least that I've put out as an artist, uh, that that was what I thought that the industry people wanted me to, to write. I, I have written songs before that I feel like are what my fans would like to hear. Um, and to me, there's a difference. Like, it's one thing if, like, a record label executive says, this is what's selling, son, you need to play this, you know. Mm-hmm. That feels dirty. But if, if you're playing music every night and you you kind of hear people's stories and you hear them talk and and you, and you come up with an idea and you're like dude my fans would love this i'm gonna write this for them and they're gonna go nuts for this to me that's that just that doesn't feel slimy to me it's it feels like i'm a i'm a musician i'm a poet i want to give a voice to what some people out there feel but they can't say themselves i mean that's Mm -hmm. what people tell me that all the time dude oh i wish i could play i wish i could sing i wish i could do what you do your songs say what i want to say but i just am not able to do it that's why i love your music so i do i have written some songs for the sole purpose of entertaining a rowdy crowd in a honky tonk well that's understanding your audience and i think there's nothing wrong with that and i I understand where those people come from who say, I wish I, you know, you're saying what I wish I could say. Um, yeah. Cause I often, given what I do, I sometimes get the question, oh, do you write songs? And I often go, no, I don't have to. Matt Nathanson already does. And he's yeah. saying everything that I would say. Yeah. <laughs> There's, go listen to his records. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I get that. Is the, have you seen your audience or your relationship with your audience change as you get more as you mature and you get more comfortable and has that become easier deeper how has that evolved well yeah i my audience is growing right now um i I spent 10 years of my life my whole 20s i spent pretty much just being a solo act playing little coffee shops for very small audiences and it's only here in the past two or three years that i've been playing with a full band and honky tonks and for bigger crowds and so I do I do feel like my music has always meant a lot to some people but it it's getting out there more now to where it means it's starting to mean a lot to a lot of people and it just gets better it just the more energy you have from the crowd the better show you put on then the more energy you get back from the crowd, then the crowd grows even bigger. And that's what's so cool about when you finally get that ball rolling in the right direction, um, it, it grows It grows into a pretty cool thing. And so, you know, I've, you know, I've got fans these days that, uh, you know, I've always had fans, but I have fans these days that we call them zaniacs. 
and uh, they're um, hardcore. They're li- yeah, they're, they're, they're every show. Hardcore, yeah. Maybe not every show. Yeah, yeah. they're they're there at every show, and especially the ones in Dallas Fort Worth, which is where I play most often because it's just close to home. Um, it is. It's just kind of like a little community, you know. It's 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 like a little social group, um, and every we just you know whenever I play a lot of these places that are close to home I walk in and I know I know the name of half the people in the room you know and we they sing along and they kind of they've been to enough of my shows that they sort of know what to expect and I know what to expect of them and it makes the whole thing just feel real laid back and fun and yeah um Zaniacs are kind of like my version of like Jimmy Buffett's parrot heads or whatever, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it just ends up being a, a social group of like-minded people who just have a good time together. Um, so it's bigger than just, you know, than just me yeah. or, or, or than just one certain song or whatever. Yeah. One of the, one of my favorite records is also, and by my, one of my favorite songwriters is um, Jack Ingram's Acoustic Motel. Mm-hmm. And on that record, he makes this really great comment and almost confession that at a one point in his career even though he was wanting more success he was also kind of afraid of it sure because he said i almost didn't want a hit record because then i could never be a one-hit wonder he was so afraid of that is there a place do you allow space in your life for fear and insecurity or do you try to just not let that in yeah there's a fine line you know it's like I I also have some reservations about how successful I want to be, quote unquote successful, and the reason it being mainly for me that you know how how that kind of success might affect my family, mm-hmm. my wife and kids are the thing that makes me happiest in life, and um, I also really enjoy doing music, and you know I want to work and I want to have a career, but I don't I don't want to be an absent dad. And uh, I, I just know that with a lot of success comes a lot of pressure to, uh, well, you just have a lot of other people that are involved with you financially in a business way. And they sort of, you're kind of the figurehead of the machine that makes the money for everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you accepted their money. You know, they put a million dollars into you. They're expecting to get their 10 million back out. And you kind of have to jump through these hoops because, hey, dude, we gave you a million bucks, you know. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's a lot of pressure, you know, that I don't have to deal with. And, um, but at the same time, I do have to just remind myself that, um, you know, so I, I, I walk this fine line where I don't want to rule out anything and I want to dream big and I want to be the best I can be. And I want to, I want to leave the door open to all the good things that could happen in the future. Um, so I don't, I don't want fear to shut me down, um, but at the same time, you know, I uh, at at every step as the opportunities do come up, I'm always evaluating them under the lens of how does this affect, you know, my family and <clears throat> the the well. Uh, you got to keep that balance. How does that affect my balance of where I'm at right now? Yeah. And right now, I feel like I've got a great balance and. Um, the only thing that can make it any better would just be a little bit bigger crowds, sell a few more records, and make a little bit more money for the time that I am away from home. Yeah, that would be that would be, be great. Make the sacrifices worth. Other than that, I'm happy, and to me, successful is happy. So, I'm successful. Awesome. I've been wrapping up with this question: Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Soundtrack to my life. Um, you mean other people's songs? Yep. Because the first thing often, that came to me, I yeah, was if like, if you're a songwriter, you write your own songs. Exactly. So it's always much. hard, but sort of yeah. when you think about your childhood and adolescence and what kind of songs, if somebody made a movie, yeah. um, what would those songs represent? Oh, know? yeah. When I was growing up, it would be like the soft hits of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. That's what my mom listened to, and that's, that's what I absorbed. Like Dan Fogelberg, leader of the band. I used to love that song when I was a kid. And... Um, <clears throat> And then when I got a little bit older in high school, you know, I broke up with my first girlfriend, and that's right when Garth Brooks came out with The Dance. And oh, so, wow. Yeah, I remember crying in my car to that song. And then 
when I was in uh, when I was in college, we were all about Dave Matthews and Pearl Jam and stuff like that. Um, so <clears throat> I would say, what's that little Dave Matthews song about? All the little ants are marching and all that stuff. That's kind of that's college for me. Yeah, represents that. And then um, I don't know. Ever since then, uh, I've been writing my own stuff, kind of. Yeah, so you you have your own soundtrack. Yeah, kind of. You're set. Yeah, that's what's cool about making records. Thank you so much. Thank you.